Hey guys, I'm Mr. Jaeger and welcome to Economics Class. This year I've been given an opportunity to do a series of video lectures along with some follow-up assignments, so hopefully you can follow along with those. Today we're going to start with what is economics, the big question, why it's important, a few objectives that we have today, um, identify what economics is studying, uh, understand the cause and effect of scarcity, that's a big issue in economics, and understand the importance of the optimizing individual. All right, so the big question, what is economics? When I ask this in the classroom, a few hands will always go up, and those answers are always going to be very similar. Someone will say it's a study of the economy, which, yes, it is. Uh, someone will always say it's a study of money, it's the study of the stock market, it's the study of business decisions, and all of these answers are right, but it doesn't encompass the whole thing. In reality, the perfect social science -y definition of it is the study of how society allocates its scarce resources. The better and more simplistic definition is the study of decision making. Because all those definitions and all the studies that we are looking at, it's the study of how people make decisions. Whether it's an individual deciding on what to purchase, whether it's a company deciding on when to stop producing, whether it's the, uh, another company deciding on how to ship their product, it's always just decision making. It deals with money, it deals with lots of other things, but it's always just the study of decision making. All right, now the next question that usually comes up in a classroom is why is this important? So why should I study this? You know, in addition to just doing well on an AP exam, there's a lot of benefits of studying economics. First off, it improves your decision making. Seeing how our decisions are done and why we decide on certain things really benefits you as an individual, as a consumer, as a producer, in every aspect. So it improves our decision making by making us aware of trade-offs and opportunity costs. And we'll get much more into detail with what those are, but whenever we make a decision, we're giving something else up. And the more we are, we, the more we are aware of that, the better decisions we are going to make. Second, it makes us aware of how we react to incentives. Now, an incentive is just something that drives us to choose one thing over another or make one choice over another. A perfect example. In 2018, we saw the, the decline of the toy retailer Toys R Us. Um, in 2018, they went out of business, they claimed bankruptcy, and leading up to that point, we saw a huge liquidation of their stores. Now, in each window, in each you know, local advertisement, um, we saw huge ads for discounted prices, that all their products were on sale. These signs that we're seeing in the windows, it drove customers to the store, it drove them to buy. That excitement over the lower prices caused people to buy much more, caused them to buy things that they really didn't need. People just wandered aimlessly into the stores, thought it was a good deal, and bought it. The more we re realize that we're responding to these incentives put out there, the better the decisions we are going to make. So keep this stuff in mind as we're going through the class. Another big aspect of why economics is important to you as a student is that it helps us make us aware of the decisions of others. So government and businesses, they're constantly making decisions. And a lot of times we look at those decisions and we're like, why are they doing this? Especially the government. In 2009, there was, we were in the middle of a severe recession. And a lot of the decisions they made were questioned. One of the most ridiculous one was the installation of turtle bridges. All right. Now, by itself, this looks absolutely ridiculous. Florida spent $3.4 million installing turtle bridges. In the picture below, we see what a turtle bridge is. It's installed to and designed to allow turtles to go under a highway as opposed to crossing over them, reducing the number of turtles that are hit. Now, it seems like a lot of money, and I know there are people that care about turtles, but most people are gonna look at this $3.4 million to protect some turtles from getting hit, it's a lot of money. But realistically, it had nothing to do with the turtles. It was added to a much bigger stimulus package that, whose goal was aimed at getting people back to work, creating jobs. So we saw all sorts of crazy projects, from bridges to nowhere to high-speed rail projects that were all funded by the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. It was government spending on a level up until that point we hadn't seen for a while. And it created jobs, it created spending, and that money multiplied throughout the entire economy and helped bring us out of the Great Recession. So sometimes government decisions seem odd, but as we learn more and more about these decisions, they become more logical. Now, the next one, businesses. 
Now, many of you guys are going to be turning 18 this year, and there's a good chance that you will receive in the mail a free razor from the Gillette Corporation. Now, why would the Gillette Corporation care so much about you that they're going to send you a free razor on your birthday? And it really is just a marketing technique. They give you this razor. They give you this amazing razor, which they do work well, but most kids aren't used to using a, a razor that's going to cost them like $11, $12. And they're used to the disposable ones. So Gillette sends this out to give you an experience. They're willing to take the loss of the free product to you in order to gain a lifelong customer. You try this razor out, you find out that it works much better than your disposables you're used to, and it's hard to go back to something less satisfying. So we continue using these razors for the rest of our lives. So that little $11 cost that they incurred to give you a birthday present got them a lifelong customer. So economics helps us understand these kind of decisions, whether it's crazy government spending or unexpected business kindness, it helps us understand these decisions. A lot of assumptions are made in the study of economics, but none as important as the concept of the optimizing individual. Now, a great book, I usually go over the first chapter in class, and I have a video that I'll tie to that um, up a little bit later. But the cartoon introduction to economics, there's a micro and a macro version of it. This one is the micro version. This is uh, written by Yoram Bauman, the stand-up economist, and Grady Klein does the illustrations in it. An amazing book. But the first chapter is all about the optimizing individual. Now, the optimizing individual is all of us. He is trying to uh, maximize his satisfaction. He makes rational decisions. He responds to incentives predictably. And he makes marginal decisions. Now, each one of these we'll talk about a little bit more in depth. But the important thing is that each and every one of us is an optimizing individual. We're all trying to get the best out of a situation. We make decisions and choices based on what's going to be best for us. Whether it's for profits, whether it's for environmental reasons, whether it's just to lay around and be lazy all day. Sometimes that's what gives us the most satisfaction. So we always make the assumption that you and I are all optimizing individuals and we're all trying to do what's best for ourselves. Nobody's trying to hurt themselves. All right, another very important concept in economics is that of scarcity. Scarcity is the result of unlimited wants and limited resources. It's the fundamental economic problem facing society. So this is why we are sitting in this classroom right now, because of, econo because of scarcity. It's something that exists all around us. There is a limited amount of resources. There's a limited amount of time, a limited amount of money. Whatever decision you're making, there's a limited amount of that. And you have to decide how to allocate it, how much you're going to use of it, how you're going to allocate the time of your day, how you're going to allocate your paycheck. Scarcity forces us to make decisions. And that's what we are studying, the study of decision-making in economics. Scarcity is the result of limited resources and unlimited wants. Scarcity forces us to make choices. Those three choices answer the questions to what we're going to produce, how we're going to produce it, and for whom we're going to produce it for. So the three basic economic questions, what should we produce? This is kind of, you know, like let's imagine that I have a farm field. And I'm deciding what crop I want to plant there. Am I going to do corn? Am I going to do soybean? Am I going to do uh, sweet corn or feed corn? I'm making a decision on what I'm going to produce given the resource that I have. How should I do it? Should I do it manually, plant these and pick these manually? Should I use machinery? You know, should I you know, hire people to do it? Should I invest in robotics? However we go about producing that crop that we choose, that's the how question. Now, for whom? Let's say I choose to produce corn. Am I using this corn for feed, for cattle? Am I using this corn? Am I going to sell it to somebody uh, who produces ethanol? These are questions we have to answer. All right, let's take a little time to do a little practice on the what, how, and for whom questions. In the description below, there's a link to this PDF. There are nine different decisions being made by companies. Each one of them is answering a what, how, or for whom question. There are going to be three of each example here. After doing the practice, make sure you check out the follow-up video to see how well you understand this concepts. Also, be sure to check out my next video dealing with equality versus efficiency, normative versus positive statements, and the difference between micro and macroeconomics. 
So I'll see you guys next time.